Hello to you, tabletop enthusiast. I'm Celine, brand and community manager for Game on Tabletop, the crowdfunding platform for gamers by gamers. Today, I'm with a special guest, Vincent Vergonjan, who is the CEO and founder of the international board game publishing company, Lucky Duck Games. I invited Vincent to talk about crowdfunding, his expertise on the subject, and his experience with Game on Tabletop. Hello, Vincent. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Let's do this. So first, can you describe Lucky Duck Games as a whole? So Lucky Duck Games is a five years old international publisher. We're a 30 people company today. Uh, we have grown quite well. We're established in all English speaking countries, all French speaking countries and Poland. Uh, as as main distributor as main publisher, sorry, working with distributors. And the particularity of Lucky Duck Game is that we found our path and our focus into making hybrid narrative board games. So all the games that we make internally, not all, but a lot of them are uh, alongside what Chronicles of Crime is, which is a game that uses an app and board games. I was wondering when did you guys start using crowdfunding and why did you decide to use it to fund your games? You have to start somewhere, right? So uh, we are June 2015. My brother has an idea for a board game. I give him some visuals. I, I like what he did. We took one year and June 2016, uh, we, we are still wondering, should we take this straight to retail or should we do a Kickstarter? And the truth is that we didn't have a lot of money and a, kick, a Kickstarter was the right route. And I'm very grateful, actually, as a matter of fact, the company would never be where it is right now without the first uh, three years of, of, of Kickstarter. I had some savings, but, uh, you know, making board games, unfortunately, takes a lot of investment just simply in the print itself, not talking about communication salaries. So um, so we went uh, June 2016, it was Vikings Gone Wild campaign. We raised uh, over $200,000 and that was the, the path forward. And I would say for the first three years, it was a matter of survival. Uh, I would say this was really the only way we were funded. Maybe there were two years and a half. And then for the last two years and a half, we have brought to Kickstarter or Game on Tabletop only project that required a uh, long period of development. So for example, uh, Chronicles of Prime, Destinies and Kingdom Rush, I think are the major one that, uh, as a matter of fact, last year, we did only one Kickstarter campaign in the entire year. Um, and we did, I think, two Game on Tabletop campaign, even though we released over uh, over 35 titles across all those areas. So, so it just shows that we just became a lot more picky about how using and when to use it. Exactly how many campaigns have you done in total or platform combined? So all platform combined, I think it's 14, maybe 15, I maybe 15 campaigns. Yeah, so so we have, we have we have our share of experience though. I mean, there are people who have done way more than that, but I think after 15 campaigns, you, you've seen you've seen quite a bit of <laughs> of the spectrum of, uh, of what can happen there. What do you think has changed in your approach between your first and your latest crafting campaign? A lot of things. Um, and surprisingly, little things. <laughs> it turns out, uh, or without really knowing too much what we're doing, there's a lot of things we did right in that very first campaign, uh, having a very generous uh, uh, stretch goal uh, approach. Um, and, and we kind of lost our way out of that because people told us, ah, Kickstarter exclusive are not great. It's kind of taking away from, you know, like people who wants to get to game later on. So we started to remove some of the stretch goal. We even did one campaign with our stretch goal up until we kind of figured out that it was not so much the stretch goal that were a problem, but rather the Kickstarter exclusive aspect. So, uh, we, we, I think we already found our full way of doing about two years ago with the first campaign of Kingdom Rush where basically we always kind of give, uh, at least on those major campaigns that come from Lucky the Game, a free expansion. Uh, we like the idea that Stretch Goal really build more content for player to play rather than just add 350 gram to of stuff and, and, and the lean and thing. I mean, those are nice to have and we also have them, but we, we figured that uh, it's there's nothing better in terms of value and and and, vis and and to visualize why am I on this campaign? Why am I trusting this creator? And why am I giving money sometimes more than a year before than a full blown extra box of, of miniatures, of cards, of dice, and, and and of playable content? So so we have been doing this constantly now for consistently for the last two years. Do you and your team have a certain timeline when you start preparing for a campaign? And does every campaign follow the same process? 
and time frame? Uh, I guess uh, yes and no, right? I mean, there is uh, definitely a lot of common foundation in the way we now start to approach campaigns. I would say uh, between the moment we sign a game, we iterate and develop it, and we decide that it's mature enough to go to uh, a crowdfunding campaign, there's about six months from that moment we decide that it's good enough. Uh, and the moment it actually hits, uh, the, the campaigns go live. And what goes into this is, you know, uh, finishing, like uh, uh, basically working on a, uh, an early prototype. One key thing that we have done consistently is to always deliver a prototype to reviewers for a campaign. For Dice Throne, which is a campaign we have on Game On right now, uh, it's obviously we sent English copy of the game, which do the job very well. But for Lucky Duck games, like those games don't exist. What we do is that we really work on basically a quarter, half, sometimes three quarters of the game, if not the entire game, and manufacture about 60 copies, maybe 80 copies sometime of the game uh, in um, not in an offset fashion, but in a, in a digital printing fashion. Uh, this is an expensive investment, but it allows us to show to backers what they'll get. And so this takes a lot of time because it's almost like a pre-production before the actual production. Um, and obviously there is a lot of uh, pre-communication. They always say, which is true, you need to come with your community, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a platform can't do it all for you. It's not just magic, just the same way in video games that because you don't have access to the Apple store that everybody will find you. So bring your community. So a lot of pre-marketing, a lot of trying to build excitement, share our progress, uh, engage with the community, hear their feedback, uh, make them part of, of this creation, which is why there's generally those type of campaigns to try to have this uh, type of synergy. So what is one particular thing you always remind yourself when preparing for the launch of a campaign? It's a good question. Uh, Timeline. So, so uh, we do. I mean, the, the the biggest thing is is time. Making sure that you hit those milestone on time. For example, making sure that that you send files to the printer exactly two months before the campaign, and and you can maybe have one week margin, and that's it. You need to start uh, doing. You need to have a good preview page at least two weeks before the campaign, so that you can start having some advertisement leading people to that page, so that they can click that follow button. Uh, so, so timeline is important. Obviously, understanding what are your stretch goal. Stretch goal is not something. I mean, you can invent on the spot the stretch goal, but every time I've seen it or I have done it. Those have led to major delay because they were kind of like in the rush and improvised and like in the excitement of, of the fire, like, oh, you know, let's just do it. And then you realize that you burn yourself into a promise. You're like, oh, wow, what have we done in the excitement of the success? So I think coming prepared when it comes to stretch goal uh, is also another one that we always remind ourselves, what are we going to do there? Um, and uh, and obviously calculating when can we afford what and, and when should they be unlocked? Um, and uh, which is also very hard, right? Because it's hard to know how much money you raise uh, and how far they can go and how much you should prepare. So, yeah, so so a bit of, of this timing and, 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 and that. So what's for you the thing that you think makes crowdfunding special? Unquestionably, the exchange with the player. I mean, the dynamic, and we do a lot of direct retail you know, release and, and there is some exchange with players through our Facebook fan page and some Twitter and maybe some Facebook group. I mean, I'm personally very active on social media, and so I get a chance to to exchange with people there. But uh, a crowdfunding is a place of communion. Actually, I would say it's more than money. It is a place of communion towards uh, a, a common goal, right? Like the, the 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 this fantasy for all of us together to be able to make that thing that uh, we we cherish and that hopefully they cherish too. It sometimes brings some really good feedback, some really good ideas that the team may have missed in the uh, in the heat of execution. It also creates um, uh, a stronger sense of, of duty uh, because, you know, those people have trusted you with with, with their money uh, and with their time. And uh, so so there is a great sense of duty that you need to deliver. And, and, and so, so um, I think for me, this is the number one uh, reason why and also the uh, number one reason why we want to go there I and, uh, only when it's really needed for projects that are truly challenging truly uh, on a scope that we could not make by ourselves 
Okay, and now do you still have the chance to interact with backers and how? Me directly, less and less. Uh, it's just, you know, we, we have grown and we have, uh, depending on the region. So for example, in France right now, we have uh, Guillaume, Julien, Davy, Siegfried. Uh, we, have, we have a full-blown French team who, who does more than I do in, in Runster. I still do a little bit of my share, mostly on Facebook. Uh, but in and in in in, in English speaking, uh, we have as or our mar uh, marketing director who does a wonderful job into creating video content, engaging with them, um, and obviously it it has this engagement has to happen, right? As I as I mentioned earlier, this is the kind of key point for us as a company is to kind of have those dialogues, to be able to have the time um, and platform to hear feedback, to engage into ideas, into hey, what about doing this? Oh, you know, maybe. So unfortunately me directly less and less more i wish i was doing it more so lucky duck games has used game on tabletop for various campaigns like recently the french version of dice throne but also above and below near and far and more what would you say are the features that you like most on game on's platform well so uh, the first one is that it speaks properly french <laughs> which is why we picked it up for our french localization we, uh, we, we really wanted a, a platform that's made by French people, lives in France and speaks proper French. Uh, and, and to, to, you know, we, it's, it's, I think something that's really, really well done in, in Game On is the, the series of from pledge to add-on to shipping. I think it's a very crisp uh, process. It's very visual. I think it's the best process that I've seen between Kickstarter and, and GameFound, which we were on recently, who has this add-on system, but it's not done in a way that you have this very simple and very easy process. Say, hey, do you want more? Uh, and I think, uh, and yeah, so that's definitely my, my number one feature because it allows us to add extra content. We don't have to put everything nicely in a pledge or something. You can just let people choose and pick what they want in the way they want. Did you have a mentor when you launched your first campaign, or did you just figure it all out yourself? I did not have a mentor, uh, though I uh, I asked questions to a lot of people uh, just trying to grab uh, information here and there. Who do you manufacture with? How does it work? Hey, can you tell me how does shipping work and extra? I, I was lucky. Uh, so I was the CEO of a video game company at the time. And I basically took two months off. <laughs> That's just what happened. Literally two two full-time months. I was the only one taking care of the campaign uh, uh, with Mateusz, the co-founder of Lucky Duck Games. We're the two co-founder. Um, and at the time, he was not even full-time himself on this. He was just uh, working on in the afternoon and evening, making this page. But I, I had to start from scratch and, and look at a lot of campaigns, trying to understand what our best practices and ask a lot of questions to a lot of people. Um, and uh, which is why I'm happy to make this kind of video, kind of share some of the things that I discovered uh, through forums or through people who had enough leadership and time to give back what they've learned to the rest of their creators out there. So, which is why I, I, rip, I decided to be present here today to answer some of those questions, kind of shed some light at least some from what i've done and, and some of the best practices that work for me for for other creators finally what do you think crowdfunding and the crowdfunding industry will look like five years from now i mean it's uh it's it's not gonna stop it is um a very it's a great way to lower the bar you know the 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 the, the entry level for anyone to actually be able to make their board game uh, it creates definitely some um, some noise in a way, you know. It, it's it's it creates a lot more creators out there creating their their board games, and and just like in the video game industry, where uh, when this Apple Store and the Google Store arrived, there was this democratization of of content creation and content delivery. Um, what it means is that only the one who professionalize himself can tend to bubble up at the top. So it means that uh, there's going to be more and more and more projects. I think I was reading recently that uh, they just hit an all-time high above 500 board games uh, concurrent uh, project on Kickstarter in the tabletop category as of last month, which has never happened before, and which is and keep seems to, to be climbing. So I think um, so I think this is something that's not here to be gone and and um, understanding 
and 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 they will be a, a, a and there's already and there will be even more prof professionalization of of the usage of those platform for uh even company like us who seems to be well established there are games we cannot make without their help they, we just can't do it it's just uh, too much of a burden destinies which is the next game that we're releasing for us in in, in may was it almost two years and a half development. Kingdom Rush was a two years development from over like 10 people. So those are a lot of salary, a lot of cash burn, and a lot of research and development into uh, those those massive things that uh, a classical retail release um, function will not, would not, like we could not do it. It will mean too, tre too much treasury, too much risk. Also, there is something good with failure uh, and, and and crowdfunding platform is that sometimes it's a good way to know that actually nobody wants that, <laughs> you know. So get in there, and I think they shouldn't be shouldn't be scared to fail there. I think there's nothing wrong with failing on a on your Kickstarter campaign or a game on campaign. I think it's just it's just a good sign, a cheap sign, you know. Like you haven't invested too much in there, you haven't started manufacturing anything yet, and you're being told ah, maybe we don't really want this. So easy way to move on to the next one. Well, thank you, Vincent, for giving us your expertise on crowdfunding. It was a real pleasure to have you here. Thank you for having me. I'm more than happy, and thank you so much for like putting those questions together. I think it's uh, I, I I love this type of introspection and the best way to address this. So. Thank you. Bye. And that's it for today's video. I think we learned a lot from Vincent's experience on crowdfunding, and I'm sure his tips could help you get better at launching your own game. You'll find different links in the description to learn more about Lucky Duck Games and their campaigns. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel to follow a crowdfunding adventures. I'll see you very soon. Until then, bye-bye.